Western painting has a sculptural optical tradition. I could be saying that to you, but it's actually this, this guy called Genius too. I've just taken the last part of his name. The first part's got so many letters in it, I just skipped it. <laughs> uh, so thank you for this contribution, uh, Genius 2. The rest of what Genius 2 says is the problem with just painting the optical is that the figure will lack form and weight. The problem with Sargent as a painter is that his work lacks weight and often poor modeling of arms and hands. And then Antiguous, I'm, I'm using, putting two questions together today because they both discuss the question of form and versus light. Um, so an argument pro form and not only shape and I don't know why he's asked, so putting it that way, I don't recall having that discussion with him, but it's easy to prove. In space, everything is black, only by the interplay of light and matter that we see color. Form is matter and color light. In painting, you may have color, but without form, it won't resemble nature. As soon as you think of color, you're, uh, you are conceptualizing an idea, as you pointed out. As Nature doesn't put labels on things, but a painter must to pick and choose what he depicts. Uh, good point. The old ideas, the old idea was based on form, which is tactile, and so color as glazes, because color cannot be seen in the dark, it, that cube still exists when we touch it. One of the reasons uh, da Vinci recommended to start with a tone canvas and add light to reveal form, and then color. The impressionists seem to work backwards. They look for sensations of color and give the illusion of form. Uh, so let's, let's go straight forward into some, into some points here, some questions. I'm gonna, I've separated this into a bunch of ser a series of points, okay? And so let's, we'll just talk them through. I want you to keep remembering, though, something that I'm not, I'm not interested in being antagonistic about this stuff. We're in a world of this plus that. We're not in a world of this versus that. You think so because you're looking at Monet and you're seeing that, that uh, his, his work, say, this experimenter, his work lacks something, right, that you like in Western art. And you might call it today, you'll call it the realism, right? It's the, it's the literal noodling up of, of, of the skin or the surface or whatever, the Bouguereau side of things. Um, I don't have any issue with any of the stuff you're talking about. I'm saying that these things aren't incongruous. Gamel said it very well, that they actually bring the, they bring the rest of visual knowledge into our hands so that we can make uh, decisions, com more complete decisions than we could before we understood some of these things. So the color and light issue. But uh, I'm never going to be the guy that wants to take sides with anybody about this stuff. I mean, I will tell you there are things that are problematical in, in, in the way people work uh, in terms of training. And most of what I talk about is for a student. In terms of training, you better be good at these, all these elements. That should be your goal, is not to pick up somebody's style and be good at it. It's that, first of all, be a master of nature, master of, the, of, 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 of articulating what you see in front of you with authority. And I'm talking about every aspect of what you see in front of you. But, but what you see in front of you can only be articulated with values, colors, sizes of locations of, of, of the spots of these things, and what happens where they meet. I mean, that really is the sum and substance of painting. So if you're not good at understanding that, which is what I'm calling the science, the underlying science, nothing else works out as well for you, okay? So, but remember, I'm just talking to students. I'm not talking to, to and, I'm, and I'm not taking sides that we should be, quote, impressionists. If you're following Gamel's logic again, the logic, the, the impressionist is somebody who paints from life and tries to paint exactly what he sees, more or less, right? And of course, that filter, you know, filtered through the, through the aesthetic eye uh, is, is a significant factor that Degas talks about uh, through a temperament. What does he say, through a temperament? So a sculptural optical tradition, yes, absolutely. The Western Western art is is um, uh, uh, a is a search for the sense of the third dimension. Now, when I say when you say sculptural, I hope that's all you mean. The sense that a thing is really really exists an object really exists there in the three dimensional space, or to the extent that your eyes say that they do, that you'd be able to render that on canvas. Why wouldn't we want that? So the only point I'm making about all this stuff is the word optical is really crucial there, isn't it? It is optical. It's, what we, it's how things present with our, how values present with our eyes that creates form, that allows you to create form. So the need for the values to be right, for example. So let's just jump over to the next thing, the question of form and weight. Now, uh, so, he, and, and, and I'm gonna jump ahead and show you Sargent. He says that Sargent lacks form and weight. Now, I don't think uh, uh, this guy means 
uh, you, uh, genius, <laughs> genius too, I don't think you mean as much weight as you mean mass, bulk. Uh, maybe you do, I mean, by the way. But I, I'm very hard pressed to find weight in a canvas, a sense of weight. And yet I will find you some, okay? But the idea of form and weight, form, form, the sense of roundness and the sense of three-dimensional space, that's form, right? That sense of more than, more than the flat, more than this. Uh, so I'm going to show you Sargent. Here's two examples of Sargent doing ex <laughs> expressly what you're saying he can't do. If any picture you've ever seen has weight, it is the one below the Al Jaleo at the, uh, at the Gardner Museum. It has what you would call weight. In other words, it looks like it looks like the piece people have substance, have bulk, have mass, and they look like they're there with a real presence. And there's also light and all those other things. But if you look at this thing, the, the lower one, it absolutely has that. This, the one above actually has all those things that you admire in other kinds of paintings, and that is they have, they have form, right? And this is very articulate form. I hope you can see it well enough. I couldn't find any better reproductions. This is from the mural at the um, uh, uh, library in Boston, the Boston Public Library. But you can see all over here that these things, if any pictures have form, substantial form, these pictures by Sargent do. Uh, so to say that he doesn't have it, or you can say he often doesn't have it, but you'd want to ask the question, when he doesn't have it, what's he going for? Because there are different, there are different aesthetics. And they're, because of the aesthetic, and even Ang would argue that, because of what you're going for, if you do the other thing exotically, you'll take away from the thing you're going for. And I'm talking about, for example, if you're really trying to get the beauty of color and you keep on insisting and noodling down and noodling down, you'll find pretty soon that people will never be able to see your color. I mean, it's one of those strange things, but take, I won't tell you to take my word for it. I was about to. So let me go back to the points here. Uh, the poor modeling of arms and hands. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little later, but your definition of modeling, you know, I think most people when, in this era, when they mean modeling, they mean noodling. They mean really fine modeling of little things on a finger. And that's not the same thing as modeling in the grand sense. So again, look at the, look at the picture down below. That's great modeling. That's, that's a marvelous modeling. And both of them actually are wonderful examples of marvelous modeling by Sargent. Modeling of the great forms. And I'll show you further examples of that coming out of Leighton and others. So, uh, and so, and that, and so that's and that. So let's let me go down through those, and then I'll go to Antiguous's questions. But I, but I would argue that you're not right about Sargent, uh, and and it is a question of what his motives are. But he's a master of many aspects of painting, and uh, which is what makes him kind of rather the colossus of of, of American art, uh, it, certainly of that turn of the century era. But um, so I'm going to just this is this is uh, Michelangelo and Da Vinci top Da Vinci top left Da Vinci, uh, and Michelangelo is um, uh, on the right. Neither of these things appear to me to have weight. That's a funny thing to say, but the fine lines I would have to suggest to you, and the very fine form are doing d damage to this idea of weight. Now the Titian, whose purpose is I think is to show weight. <laughs> to, you know, he's composed his pictures differently. And notice the dark mass. Now, this is a very dark picture in a certain way, but it doesn't convey any sense of weight to me. The figures look like they're floating, rather. And you'll notice that things are like shadows and things like that. There are a number of things that actually convey the sense of weight, of human weight. But if you're talking about corporeal mass, even there the Titian wins over these two. This is beautifully modeled, but its sense of mass is, is relatively speaking, weak. Well, this, this, by the way, is, is a pretty substantial sense of mass, but it depends on what you mean by it, you know. So I say bulk or something like that. But I still don't see weight there. This, this is a floating figure. And look at and the faint value contrast and the fine lines uh, dictate that. So here's Titian, and I, I suggest to you again that I, I feel what you're talking about, a sense of weight. I don't honestly truly see weight in pictures. But if you mean, if you mean bulk and if you mean substance, like figures having substance, the, the Titian down below, and Titian's the colorist of this group, right, in, in theory. So what's he doing with all that weight, right? So that you would have thought that would have been Da Vinci's. Well, given, of course, everybody's living, you know, one after the other, and they're building on each other, so let's not pick on it. This is not a war between these different people. This discussion isn't. So I'm showing you Bouguereau in the upper one. I don't see any weight in that thing at all, <laughs> you know. I suppose you could argue that figure in the middle has weight. I don't, so again, I don't know what you mean by weight. Now, there's, there's some element of substance, but they, these figures are mostly very, 
they're like they're like they're like da Vinci's. They're rather not weighty to me. Now that's just me talking, right? You can make your own decision about this. But if you look down here at Leighton, though, this figure in particular, and you feel, as I said, the dark, the cast shadow, all this stuff, this, this feels weighty. That's a very the clouds are substantial. <laughs> they have a sense of mass to them that has this sense of weight that we're talking about. And you can say that if you want to talk about that with all these pictures here, right? So it's not a given that if you noodle something up, you get weight. So how does this guy do it? And you, you'd have to argue that he does it because he models big. In other words, he's modeling the great masses. He's not just modeling little fi in fine ways. And he gets a gr far greater sense of weight. But, depend <laughs> but again, that's your word, and I'm not sure I'm using it well. But I say the word substance. And the sense of mass, like a person actually, you know, a bulk, like a person actually is taking up <laughs> a physical space in a three-dimensional way. But that's definitely not limited to, uh, to these guys. And as again, if you look back and forth, I think you would argue, it'd be very difficult to argue this has any weight compared to this one at all. So, but that's just, you know, that's just me giving an opinion, okay? A sense of things as I see them. Uh, so now here is, uh, here's Millet. Now, here's the, the laundresses loading each other up with laundry. You know, there's something there of a, a sense of weight, isn't there? Bulk, mass, you know, again, here with this Millet, uh, this guy is modeling big again, though. You see that? These are great forms, and great forms tend to have a sense of weight that's different from, from finessed forms, okay? Just telling you that what, the way I see it, okay? And then finally, in that category, I'm showing you uh, 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 Chardin up in the left corner, and these three by Brangwen. Now, have you noticed that each of these things has this, this sort of heavy outline feeling about them? They're massed thick. The paint is thick, you know? So every little object, uh, every, every single object has this sense of being puffed out. I guess you could argue exaggerated in a context with relation to its, to its world. These don't have the same sense of truth visually that, say, a sergeant does. But they have a sense of truth, in a sense, a, a sort of a forced sense of formal truth, of substance, what you'd call substance. And so, and again, but, but again, these are rendered big. It's, these aren't done with fine lines and, and fine noodling. So keep that in mind that there are ways to get to this question, you know, to this, to this uh, way of thinking big. I mean, even this, this bridge, these flags, everything feels weighty in his work. And I do suggest to you that it's probably because of these, the tendency to make big, fat outlines rather than anything fine. Uh, and, 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 uh, well, I'll leave it at that for now. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to walk away for a second from this. I'm going to go back to the questions because I wanted to just address what, um, uh, Antiguous said. Uh, so form is matter and color is light. So if form is matter, we can't paint it, can we? We can only paint the illusion of form, right? And color, by the way, isn't light, it's just values. And what makes it appear light is, is its relative lightness and its highly chromatic element, plus contrast, right? So it's all the, it's all, it's all the physical content of the, of the, of the uh, apparent world, the appearing world, right? Darker darks, lighter lights, more chroma, less chroma. It's all the stuff of the palette, right? Uh, but conceptually, an idea to depict, this is a big thing. So he talks about that idea of conceptualizing, conceptualizing an idea. Now, I've said to you before on, on this show, and I say it to my students all the time, Ang says it about drawing. He says, if, you're not, if you don't have a concept of the thing fixed in your mind and all, you'll be chasing shapes around all day long. Well, that's just a concept of the shape. But you have to have a concept of the form. You have to have a concept, would you believe, of the light, or you'll just be chasing values around all day long, right? You have to have a concept of the light, and you have to know what you're aiming for, and you have to know when you hit it. But so every aspect of this works from a concept. Now, form isn't matter. Form is value transitions, right? It's, it's, it's what, what Meldrum talks about, the speed of the value. So if you're talking about a ball, how fast it goes from the darkest dark, the middle tones, how fast they travel to get to the light, you know, that, that creates that sense of form in a space. Well, that's a funny way to put it. I never quite thought, I don't think I would ever typically do that, but there's a gradation process. And if your grading, if your grading isn't happening at the right rate per inch, so to speak, it doesn't look like the, the ball. It'll look like something else. It'll look flatter than that ball, for example. And so if you don't have a concept fixed, and I'm going to tell you this concept about form is a felt concept. It's as if you were feeling it with your hand, right? 
It is truly that. But you still only have values to work with. And if you're not working with the values in front of you, you start making it up. And I suggest to a lot of, um, of that very highly forced form is just that. It's exaggerated. The Brangwen stuff looks exaggerated. And, uh, you know, he puts, he puts exotic highlights on lots of things to get even more of it, right? So, uh, but, but your job as a student isn't to learn to exaggerate. Your job as a student is learn to make the form with the values, with the set of the values and the value relationships that you're forced to work with. And that's the real skill, right? So it's a relational skill. So, uh, and so, and then you mentioned that form, which is tactile, uh, uh, and light, but both of them are something, right? Both of them have to, you have to conceive of them. So form, form, yes, I call it the feeling for form. Uh, so let me just jump over, and then I'm gonna just talk about Sargent and those guys. Let me just jump over, uh, actually, let me, let's talk about Sargent first. I'll talk about Da Vinci, this whole idea that Da Vinci worked from, it push, says put down the values and then build the color onto it. Um, would you believe that there, the best ways change over time, that best processes change? Uh, he may have found the same situation as many of the colorists of our time that simply said it doesn't work that way as well. It works better if you put on the color note and build your forms. Uh, and uh, if you work from getting the light effect and build the forms, and I'll show you how I do it uh, just briefly for two seconds. But let me just drop back down there again to um, um, uh, Sargent. Now, this is this one above is Leighton. And this would be an example of what you would call substantial drawing. That's substance, right? And uh, I should have made that. I didn't mean to cover them quite so much. Why did I do that? I was trying to get their heads the same size. I always do that. I try to get their heads to feel the same size. But this is Sargent. And Sargent has this, has a great sense of bulk, of mass, of form. He feels like he's all there, right? <laughs> when you look in close and you want to see the little forms and all that sort of stuff, no, this doesn't have it quite so much. Although if you look at that forehead, that's a brilliant master. That's a, that's a masterful handling of the great form and the subforms. Admittedly, he's working by suggestion, that is say by the strongest players and how they and how they play across that service. And he's not, not looking to model from left to right uh, in such a literal way as the realist guy wants to do today. The noodler, as I call it, and I don't mean it, except that that's sort of the way it works. I mean, I remember being that guy and can be that guy whenever I want, right? <laughs> Nothing limits me. There's an element, by the way, even of noodling that has value. And I don't mean so I'm not picking on it. So it's just a question of when and why. But here's a tarball also. Now, this has got that, uh, that, that what I'm still talking about is a great sense of form, but it's also got this, this, this startlingly uh, flashing bit of light over here, maybe even more impressive than this because of the guy's white hair and that sort of thing. But again, there's no lack of form in this thing. So I've, I'm hard pressed to understand how you would mean that if, when you say substance, when you're talking about form, I mean, this is great form. It's not little modeling. It's great modeling of significant form. And the difference is massively huge. And one of the things that happens when you become an impressionist is that you have to learn the difference between important things and unimportant things because you're working with all the categories at once. And so you have to know what color is important and why, you know, which lights, why. And the same thing is true of form. So there are significant ones and there are less significant ones. And you learn to, you're always bringing them all up at once in this, in this evolution of a picture from life. So, uh, but let's talk some more about form. And again, here I'm showing you on the right, the Da Vinci, the, uh, the Bugro, and the Leighton. And I'm really gonna ask you, this is Sargent here, and this is, uh, and this one here, I'm trying to show you this hand, this one is Tarbell. I'm gonna ask you which one has the greatest substance, the greatest sense of mass, the greatest, the greatest sense of a three-dimensional existence. And I would suggest to you it's this one. It's not these guys here. I'm talking to you, if you just look at it simply, this one has that sense of mass in space, real substance. This one looks like an outline that's modeled up to look like fingers and all sorts of, it's a linear modeling process. This has more than that one because it's broader, but in both cases, these here, they don't have the same sense of which, what I would call substance. Weight is your word for it. This one has weight, <laughs> that has real weight. And so, and then again, that, back to that question of, of a significant modeling. So, so Bugro is this guy who just sort of models everything on a finger. And he's got the most marvelous uh, way of doing it. He's a, he's a you know, I, somebody referred to him as a skin man. I know in his day he was referred to as Bugarotic, <laughs> Bugarotte. But it, was all, but it was a critique of this idea of making sensual skin. 
And uh, he doesn't have the great sense of form. He doesn't, that is say, he doesn't show the great sense of form the way both Leighton and da Vinci do, or even these guys do. But, uh, but these guys, again, you talk about significant. So this is all built out of significant light effects, edge, edge contrast comparisons and all these things. And the great, for, you know, and the form management just at key places like this or just like this right here. And that happens to produce everything that you could possibly want in a picture except what? Literalness. The, if you actually believe that our job as a painter is to actually make a hand, then you would be wrong, right? Your job is to, and, and this isn't making a hand either because hands don't have little white outlines around them, right? So you, 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 you got to get over the idea that we're making a hand and your idea of modeling now, this is no, you know, your idea of your way of modeling doesn't necessarily de deliver you. It actually leaves out a lot of data. And again, that's one of those things is substance. It gives it less weight when you, when you model this way. When you, you know, I'm, it's really, that's really a, uh, by the way, I'm going to say just to be precise, that's really an, un, an overstatement, but it's still key to what we're talking about. So here's a hand, an early sergeant hand, little girl. And this is, a, this is one of the most stunning pieces of modeling you'll ever see. But it's not modeled like, here's the outline, and then there's the noodling of the, in the optical sense, right, of literally modeling from the highlight to the middle tone to the next middle tone. But it's done from the broad planes and the great sense of form. And uh, so you can see he doesn't neglect any significant form. And partially that's because he's actually having to work with other players, right? He can't just isolate himself with an outline like this guy did and just model up that thing in hopes it all, you know, works out okay. He's just not allowed to. It's not provided for, for the impressionist. That's the guy looking at the thing not only as a hand, but as a visual ensemble, as an element of a visual ensemble. Which brings us to the, maybe you might say the last question, and that is, and that is uh, the question of whether this is, uh, more real than this, right? So let me back away. I did not mean to bring that up. Uh, I will bring it up, actually. But um, so, so your, your idea of realities, this is no less real than this. But that's the thing that you've got to resolve in your own mind as a painter. This, this has m much that this one does not, will never have, right? And if you... <laughs> It's a question of deciding, as one of uh, Lack's students said in, in a writing, something he wrote. He basically said that man is real, he's three-dimensional, he's what God made, we should be drawing people, we should be drawing things that are real. But it just happens that God put real things like hands and drapery in lost and found settings, in, you know, in, 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 in curious lightings where some parts of them will disappear. Is it our job to falsify that? Or is it our job as a, as a student to learn how to, to render a thing in its context as well as a thing in isolation like that? And I'm only begging you to think of this as you would, if, you know, as you would su suggest it to a good student. But don't believe that this world or that world are exclusive. They, they aren't. I mean, they're exclusive, yes, in the sense that once you set up this world, that's your job. You're going to paint that way the whole way through the painting. But don't think they're exclusive in their sense of knowledge. You need to know this and be able to do it. And, you need, and, 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 and lots of what's in this, the content of what's in this, starts with the with knowledge of, of, of managing the shape of the hand, the shadow line, uh, the, uh, the turning of the form, and all those things in an isolated way. So I think that's it. Now I'm going to just show you. This. I, I'm feeling apologetic, but I hit it, so I'll just show it to you. This is, this is my way of laying in a figure, something I'm just doing in the last few days. I did it for the purposes of talking about this with you. So this is, this is several days into it. This is the first day. This is the lay-in. Now, I apologize for the lightness of this thing, but I'm hitting these notes. They're not very far from this. I'm not hitting them way lighter. It's just the camera I had. It was a different camera, and the person who came in and shot the second one did a way better job. This is me and my phone doing bad things. But what you're seeing here is a guy hunting for significant notes. Like this is one of the most chromatic. The, the figure, the grand figure with this gold to red movement, the, the gray here versus the bluer notes of the, and the darkest dark and, and all these things spotted around, you know, the beginning of the notes that make up the rug on the floor. This is color spotted around. Then there's the beginning of the placement. And I'll talk about this with you on another time uh, if somebody brought me my attention 
to the need to do this. I think it was David Rodman. So David, uh, apologize for using your last name. I don't mean to do that. Um, but you're, but this is that example though of where we draw and why we draw. So this whole thing here, this exit, this thing here, I mean, this top and bottom, that's this relating to this and this, trying to set up maybe even some of this, trying to set up what's gonna be, where the location is of this uh, and this as the top and bottom of a figure. At the same time, getting the exit, which is, you can see over here what that is, and the exit down here, uh, and um, I could have gone for this exit here. I didn't, and I'm not sure if I know why, I, but, but I think I was at that point still working on just making sure the top and bottom were there and that we're, they're beginning to get aligned with each other. Uh, so this is, this is a way of proceeding that you can see will get you to a very substantial sense of weight, right? And again, I would suggest to you the reason this has any sense of weight or substance at all is because the greatness of the forms. And it's got nothing to do with anything else, probably. I mean, it has nothing to do with fine modeling, that's for sure. And maybe you disagree that it has a sense of weight, but uh, or what we're call, what I'm calling substance or bulk or whatever it is. Uh, but anyway, so those that's something I'm working on. I hope I can bring you some of the shots of this one as it's in progress and bring it to a conclusion. But right now we're locked out of my studio uh, down in Massachusetts. So on that note, I'll think I'll end. Was there anything else? Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so I just show you a couple uh, uh, nudes, and I actually have this discussion in one of the most recent Paxton videos. This is a Paxton. I'm talking about the outline thing where it works like, like um, uh, Bouguereau more. And so these are both Paxtons. This is a really bad. I couldn't find a better copy of this. I think it's at the Whistler House. But, uh, but I'm trying to show you that this process, I've copied Paxtons through a different process from what I think he, he, he did. You, what I saw in one of the things that he did is I saw really significant drawing of the figure and of this and of this before he made a single color mark. Uh, even if it was just in charcoal, a number of the people did. You would say that was with uh, Carlos Duran and others. So be aware that the, um, be aware that the uh, process uh, didn't, doesn't require that to get to it, uh, the same place. At, I mean, this, this isn't at the same finish, obviously. But to, but to set you up to be in the same place is different. Again, you can look at starts by uh, Jerome online and uh, some other people and see how this feels different and what, and what this is doing. But um, so this is my example of what I consider a good start in a painting because it incorporates light, color, and, but all in big ways. So the great forms, the great proportions, the great angles in the picture, the placement, uh, the, so the compositional elements, the color scheme, all these things done big because I want to see whether this painting is worth bringing home, which some people, or which could be as fine as this, and doesn't need to be necessarily, depending on what you find as the aesthetic that actually inspired you. So with apologies for showing my own stuff on this, I guess that's what I do, but uh, thank you for being here this time, and thank you for those questions, Antiguous and, um, and iGenius too. Uh, uh, please do subscribe, share, and, uh, and like, and all the rest, um, and, uh, We'll see you next time.